Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about Newton's law of gravitation or the force equation for gravitational fields. Now firstly I want to introduce you to gravitational fields. So a gravitational field is where an object with mass will feel, uh, basically an object with mass will feel a force upon it. So for example this object here it has mass, it's in a gravitational field and a force acts on it and pulls it down. Now all gravitational fields are attractive which means that the two objects will be brought together, okay? So masses will be attracted to one another. And this is actually quite an important part for astrophysics. Now what I've got here is I've got a circle here representing the Earth, and I have labelled the radius of the Earth from the centre of the Earth, okay? Because when we're talking about um, gravitation or Newton's law of gravitation, we are be the force is to the centre of that object. So, for example, on, a gravity, on the Earth, we are being pulled with a force to the centre of the Earth. Okay? The fact that there is a crust there, that's the thing that stops us. So if I was to draw the field lines, okay, so remember, field lines are something that we use to demonstrate the field at that point. They would look like this. So they will emanate from the Earth here. Okay, and the direction of these field lines would be towards, okay? So what these arrows are representing is they are representing the direction that the test mass would fall if it was in that gravitational field. Now another thing to remember is that field strength is dictated by how dense these lines are or how close these lines are together. And the closer they are to the Earth here, the, so if I just extrapolate this one out, as you can see, the start thinner, and they get progressively thicker. So closer to the Earth, the field strength is stronger, and that makes perfect sense. Something that us on the surface is far more attracted to the Earth than, let's say, um, the Hale-Bopp comet. Okay. So some key information about the Earth that will help us with a few equations is uh, that the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6, and the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And all of that information, as well as the sun's radius and uh, mass, is all on the front of your data sheet. So at the front, right there. Okay. Now, Newton's law of gravitation is a law that is um, referencing the force that we actually feel due to this field. Okay. In the previous video, I talked about the relationship between, um, an, uh, between the forces of objects in a radial field. And the formula looked like this. It was that the force that was felt between them was some sort of constant multiplied by the property of the thing in the field times by the property of the thing causing the field, all divided by r squared. This is known as an inverse square law, that the force is proportional to 1 over r squared. Okay, so it's an inverse square law. So as it spreads out more, the force would decrease. Okay, so the, if I got double the distance away, the force would decrease by four. Okay, so if R doubled, force would quarter. Okay, and you see this in Coulomb's law as well and all other radial fields. Now what Newton did is he actually looked at the relationship between force and um, force and the properties in a gravitational field and he came up with this equation here that the force in a gravitational field was the constant g okay which is the gravitational constant times by m1 the mass of the object in the field times by m2 the mass that's giving it the field the the, the mass of the thing that's giving the field all over r squared and we worked out that this number, this g, this constant, must be actually quite small. 
And the reason for this is that the masses of the things that could be causing the field are going to be quite big. So if we're actually going to take something quite significantly like two people, so two people next to each other, we don't really have a force of attraction between them. You don't feel that actual force, which means that this constant here must be quite small. And we only notice this force when, of course, these masses become quite big. The value for this here is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. I'm going to give the units that are on here. Newtons, meters squared per kilogram squared. Okay. So that there is on here. They call it the the gravitational constant, but sometimes it's called the Newton's gravitational constant, okay? This is the gravitational constant. I want to give you an example of using this formula. So what I'm going to have is I've got my Earth here, and I've got the information about the Earth. I'm going to have a penguin up here. It is not to scale, and this penguin's on the surface of the Earth, okay? And this penguin has a mass of 100 kilograms. I want to know the force that that penguin would feel. Okay. So I'm going to use this formula here. So if I grab a pen. So 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by the mass of the penguin, 100, times by 6.6, oh, wrong one. 5.98, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, all over the distance that this penguin is from the centre of the Earth, which is uh, the radius of the Earth, so 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared. And if I bung it into a calculator, so 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by 100, times by 5.98, uh, 98 times 10 to the 24, divided by 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared, I get an answer that the penguin is 982.99 newtons. So that is the force that is felt between them, okay? So this penguin is feeling 982.99 newtons of force pulling it towards the centre of the Earth. Now, what I'm going to do now is prove something. I'm actually going to use Newton's second law, which is F equals ma, to find out how much this penguin will be accelerating towards the centre of the Earth. Okay, so F equals ma. So this is the resultant force between the fields, which in this case is going to be 982.99, equals the mass of this penguin, because I'm finding his acceleration, a, and I get an answer for that of 9.829 meters per second squared. Now this looks very, very close to what we refer to as G, the gravitational field strength, or the gravi basically the, the gravitational field strength of the um, object itself, okay? So this value of g actually comes from this calculation here. Newton's law of gravitation, the force that is between two objects that, that are in each other's field. So it's a mass in a gravitational field. Okay. And we can use g, this formula here, to find g at any point. Okay. If we know the resultant force due to the fields, we could find the acceleration or the value for gravity in any location. Okay. This does mean, of course, if this number got bigger because they were further away, this force would get smaller, which means, of course, this value for g would also get smaller, which makes perfect sense. The higher I am up from the Earth, the higher the altitude, the less I feel from gravity itself. And that there is Newton's law of gravitation.